Uh, good morning, friends. Once again, it's good to meet you, and we are actually missing your presence in the campus. Fine, but anyway, because of the circumstances, we have to do take advantage of the uh, alternative one. <coughs> Even though we old people are not that, uh, I mean, uh, familiar as well as not very convenient, comfortable with uh, this kind of uh, electronic modes so, uh, of sharing our experience, but. We have to do it under the circumstances. Okay, today we would like to speak about, discuss about a uh, few prominent uh, science communicators in the world as well as in India who have made a difference to the uh, system. Okay, now first of all, I mean the uh, study materials are already there with you, but let me highlight a few of the points with those communicators. Okay. Uh, first of all, <coughs> there is Julia Varney, jo about Julia Varney, your uh, study material which I have given you, it, it doesn't uh, contain anything about Julia Varney. But Julia Varney, as you know, was a very prolific and very effective science communicator. I mean, he has written so many science fiction uh, novels and other books that uh, hardly anyone else can equate his uh, career. Okay. 20,000 leagues under the sea, then the, the center of the art, journey to the center of the art, etc. They have been written in such a nice way that if not, if even if they are, uh, it is impossible to reach, but uh, even if it is impossible to actually practically carry it out by uh, human beings, yet we can have a good idea and uh, say about visualization about how the system works okay that is why he is a very successful science communicator per se for the entire world okay uh, in fact he hasn't been discussed or he hasn't been uh, evaluated being a science communicator as such but he has been more evaluated as a uh, science fiction writer and uh, novelist basically then comes Isaac Asimov. Isaac Asimov, you are all familiar, like Julie Verne and Arthur C. Clarke. Isaac Asimov was a uh, professor in a university of USA. I think it was Boston School of Medicine. He was a uh, professor in medicine school of Boston University with a very good academic credentials. In fact, uh, he started writing science fiction books in 1950 in the, with Pebble in the Sky and the term uh, he has been credited as coining the term robotics for the first time in the world okay and along with robert a Heinlein and arthur c clark asimov was supposed to be the uh, one of the three stars three signing stars of science communication and science fiction writing during those days he wrote almost 500 books and some of them were very prominent among others and after an illustrious career, uh, he has been uh, associated with science communication and in the world of science communication, he has been, his name is credited with so much of reputation for the entire world. Okay. Then comes uh, Miss Dorothy Nelkin, who, about whom you have already uh, read about in the study materials. Uh, she has around 26 books including Saving Science and uh, Body Buzzer, the Market for Human Tissues, etc. She has uh, chosen practical subjects to be dealt with or to be uh, written in popular formats. For example, uh, you must have seen this films, Mongol uh, Young and another one where uh, the uh, operation to uh, operation for preparation of going to the uh, Mars, going to Mars, and uh, going to Mars was very nicely depicted. Okay, now if you can relate practical problems with uh, fictional characters. Or as we have spoken in the uh, cinema for health communication issue, if you can uh, match, if you can put 
practical problems in a fictional character with fictional characteristics in a feature film format or even in a novel format, short story format, science fiction uh, novel format. That appeals to the mind much better than anything else. Okay, you will find uh, many stories and novels which are uh, set with the basic principle, basic uh, background of those are uh, scientific principles of different kinds and uh, they depict or they tell a story, they, uh, is a storytelling with uh, practical, uh, I mean stories, practical background in such a format which is very popular for the human being and understandable for the human beings. In Assamese, uh, there is a person, a popular writer called Ovisit Horma Borua, uh, yes, Ovisit Horma Borua, not related to me by the way, even though we are uh, having the same name, of course, you know, uh, all good people, I mean, Ovisit named, named people named with Ovisit are all good people, they always are very successful in everything, whatever they do. They do. Okay, jokes apart. Uh, Ovisit Horma Borua also writes, I mean, specializes in science fiction novels and I have read quite a few of his novels, he's still writing. Um, I mean, they are good enough. Okay. If you uh, get an opportunity, read one or two of his stories, uh, novels. Then comes Javius Holden. Javius Holden, I think you should be, a, you must be familiar with because uh, he's a prominent name in our country, John Barton Sanderson Holden. He was born in Oxford and he was a British citizen, but he was a very uh, unusual kind of personality, never compromising. He had some differences with the uh, government of his country and later on uh, he took citizenship of India and he settled in Odisha for the rest of his life and he started devoting, he devoted his life for uh, research in botany and geology later on. And uh, he has written extensively about animal biology, Daedalus, the cause of evolution, inequality of man, science advances, etc. Science of advances, etc. He has started, I mean, uh, joined the Genetics and Biometry Laboratory in Odisha in 1957. Okay. Uh, they have been able to write in such a way that which are uh, very convincing and comprehensive and convenient for people to understand. I mean, uh, breaking very expressing very complex scientific uh, developments into very simple language which people can understand easily. Okay, that is their uh, characteristics and that, that is their uh, plus point advantage which they utilize. Then we come to Jayant Vishnu Nurlikar, a very Indian person who had studied in uh, Cambridge and uh, In fact, it is said that they, uh, he, along with his team of researchers, have come uh, with uh, come up with a theory which could see even Einstein's theory of relativity. Fine, and uh, he has also excelled in this uh, field. He was awarded the Padma Vibhushan in 2014 and Padma Vibhushan in 1965, and quite a few number of prizes. And in fact, he has also received Sahito Academy for his autobiography. And he has also participated in Carl Sagan's TV show Cosmos, a personal voyage in 1980s. And very interestingly, he was a winner of the Kalingo Prize for Science Popularization, which is awarded by UNESCO to any person with a uh, major contribution in this field. Okay. Uh, I consider myself lucky enough to have listened to one of his public lectures in De Brugger University when I was with All India Radio uh, De Brugger for about two years. Uh, even though I'm, a, I'm not a science person, but at least whatever he was speaking about a particular issue about the space, the topic was space and its utilization. Uh, it's very lucid. Even a person like me or others who did not have a background in science, proper science, 
our pure senses could understand those things very easily fine this is the gift or gift the practice you will have to take up and <coughs> Uh, there is a very uh, popular expression given by uh, Thomas Alva Edison. He is saying that man is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. That means there is nothing as God gifted uh, qualities to us. Maybe 1% or 2%. But everything we have to achieve on our own. Okay. So, uh, what I want to say is that uh, when we are speaking about these popular uh, prominent science communicators or science journalists, that we have to, I mean, nobody is gifted by God. Okay. So, we have to practice ourselves to the maximum possible extent so that by the time we become uh, graduates from this university, we have some hand in uh, some practice in this regard and we are established as a, I mean, where established means at least uh, newspapers or magazines will take some uh, interest in our writings. Okay. Now let me, uh, I actually forgot to tell you even in the earlier session, uh, there is another person, uh, there was another person, Professor Yospal, who was a professor in the University of uh, Science Subjects. He was a very prominent science communicator from our country. Uh, he was in fact the brain behind the turning point program which I have spoken to you in big details earlier in the uh, regular classes. Uh, Professor Jaspal was very much uh, interested and dedicated to the cause of science to be informed or disseminated to the general public so that people can take advantage of it and improvise their lifestyle. Okay. Similarly, a giant business Nurlikar, which of whom, about whom I have just now spoken to, he was also very uh, concerned that people should understand the very basics of science without going into the complex details if they don't need to. Okay. I mean, but at least the basic understandings of science will help people to uh, lead a healthy life. In one of the earlier uh, lectures on health communication, I have said that spitting, uh, littering the public uh, spaces, these are all because of not uh, because of not understanding the scientific issues or uh, basic things by majority of the people in our country. If we would have understood the logic and I understood the importance or risk of littering or uh, creating nuisance in the public, spitting, then uh, throwing garbage on the roads, then at least if, if you could have understand the uh, importance or implications of those uh, practices uh, and we would have done abide by them, at least half of the problems would have been solved for, I mean, in terms of health and mental well-being of our society. Okay, that is why the science communicators are so much dedicated for making even the general people like us to understand the basic implications of leading a healthy life and scientific life and looking at things in a scientific way okay uh, then we come to one uh, two persons from Assam one is uh, Dr. Dinesh Sandra Goswami who was a uh, uh, a senior scientist with traditional research laboratory or nowadays it is called the Northeast Institute of Science and Technology in Jurhat. It is part of the uh, <coughs> big network of around 40 or 45 laboratories of Central uh, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, the Government of India organization, CSIR. This person was also dedicated to uh, popularizing science and uh, he, has, he was prominent both in, uh, proficient both in Assamese as well as English and uh, he started his life as a uh, professor of Cotton College way back in 1970s after uh, doing his PG and PhD from uh, Guwahati University. Then he got a job as a scientific uh, publication advisor with CSIR at Delhi Publication Division. Uh, then he worked there for a long time, then he came to uh, the, uh, he was transferred to Jurhat and even before that, long before he, he had joined CSIR, he was already writing science, uh, about science issues in popular story formats. 
In fact, I myself remember reading one uh, booklet here. He has definitely written about uh, simple things like how the waves work, how uh, magnet works, etc. In a story format to uh, kids. I mean, one brother and one, one sister, they are talking to a senior uh, neighbor, a uh, young neighbor who was making them understand that this is how things work. I mean, they were very lucid and very easy to understand. Okay. And uh, uh, topics he had chosen was very carefully chosen and uh, which were interesting for most of the people. He has written uh, radio dramas, uh, popular articles and even uh, he has written for children's magazines also which are also very nicely written so the person is still writing uh, now I think he writes a regular weekly column in Amarakhon the Assamese uh, daily and there also he is dealing with some scientific issues on every uh, write-up every episode of his write-up then comes Professor uh, Kiradhar Borua, who was a professor of uh, chemistry in our uh, uh, in a place nearby Tezpur, it is Bishanath Sarayali College. And incidentally, he was a contemporary of Dinesh Chandra Goswami. And uh, Dinesh Chandra Goswami, let me again tell you, uh, he was involved, he was the person who was in charge of publication of the uh, science. Uh, Encyclopedia, which was in Assamese, which was published by Ahom Khai Tukhoma. Okay. In that regard, uh, once I have read Dinesh Goswami's uh, biography, there he has mentioned about Kiradhar Gurdwasar as his classmate, most probably, or at least contemporary. Uh, they worked together in a cooperative way, uh, co cooperative way so that they could do much more for science work activities. Borwa sir is a prominent writer in science uh, issues and he has been writing a regular column in Prantik, the most po uh, popular fortnightly Assamese magazine uh, which was established by Bhavindranath Hoikia and more than 40 years, around 40 years back. And he writes in such a nice language. In fact, uh, I have read about Peter Ditchie Kelder. Uh, the first person to have become, to have been formally known as a science writer or science journalist in the world from a column written by Kirodhar Bhulasari in Pranti. Okay. So he is a prominent uh, prolific writer who has been doing it, who has been doing this service for a long time. And uh, I have uh, the uh, fortunate enough, I was fortunate enough to meet uh, Kirodhar Bhulasari a long time back around. 10 years back in Guwahati on a uh, program which I have convent. convent. Uh, there he told me that he had a dream project in his life that there would be a science village uh, where uh, somewhat like, not exactly, but somewhat like a uh, regional science center it will be set up and different experiments on various activities of science will be uh, established there. and. Children as well as anyone, but basically for children and anyone can go there and uh, take part in the experiments by themselves so that they can learn things by doing. Okay, But that has not become uh, possible yet for many reasons. And he has also in fact uh, incidentally told me one very uh, interesting uh, development. The once somebody from a Metropolitan newspaper, uh, the uh, Guwahati correspondent of the Petro Metropolitan newspaper uh, met him long time ago, that was around 12 years back, that, uh, and asked him about his preparations for the science village uh, project. That time he has uh, mooted the idea, he has developed the idea and uh, spoke to some people about it so that uh, it was a probably a public meeting in business really where he has Brought the subject, uh, taken up the subject, and people say they will support it. After getting to know about it, one uh, the correspondent of a Metropolitan Daily has contacted him and took an interview. And next day, in the paper, the Guwahati edition of the paper, it was published that the science village is almost ready, and uh, 
um, almost I mean uh, everything is ready and just only the construction is to start soon but very surprisingly uh, Borbasar told me he was very saddened by the fact that there was nothing like that okay well, uh, he told me there was nothing like that. Actually, uh, the project was at a very much planning stage only. No uh, uh, advancement happened. But the person, uh, he was very surprised that uh, the journalist had reported something like that. Okay. Uh, you should, uh, why I am broaching this subject is that you should also take note of it and never write something unless you get it properly verified by the either uh, by either the uh, origin of your the source from which you have, whom you have got, or never get a misunderstanding uh, to be reflected in your writings, whether it is science communication or even in general uh, reporting or journalism. Okay. Uh, similarly, I would be happy to inform you that uh, there is a professor. There was, uh, I think, uh, the lady has uh, she's a lady. Uh, she retired from Dhamaji College or uh, Lakhimpur College sometime back. Uh, you know, National Council for Science and Technology Communication and CSTC is a government organization. They uh, confer, I mean, they have a provision for an award every year for popularizing science in the uh, popular media. I mean, uh, print as well as a uh, print media, basically. This lady has got this prize, the recent prize. In fact, I was planning, uh, I made a plan for inviting her for an interaction with you people. But suddenly this uh, situation has become so difficult. I'm sorry for that. But uh, let me hope, uh, let us hope we can invite her in future. Now let us talk about a uh, few journals, journalists in this regard. Uh, <clears throat> As I have said or told you earlier, uh, the Hindu has a regular weekly column on science and technology developments. I mean, column means it's a complete uh, full page dedication for it. They focus on various issues at the same time and they explain things for the benefit of the people. Uh, in 2016, I think in May, uh, I was invited for a program, a small, small uh, congregation conference of uh, science, prominent science communicators in Bangalore, uh, in Indian Institute of Science. There is an organization called Indian Institute of Advanced Studies within Indian Institute of Science. Uh, there we met uh, quite a few like-minded persons. It was in Bangalore. I was fortunate enough to meet the person who was writing for Hindu for a long time in the science column, uh, who happened to came and uh, came there and uh, interact with us. Uh, I tried to inter uh, invite him for our department, but uh, he told me that he was busy for almost one year. And for almost one year, his itinerary was uh, full. But later on, some health problems also occurred for him. He couldn't come. He also, he in fact told us uh, that the, about how they go through the process of finding out the uh, articles and publishing the articles. It was a very tedious as well as very thorough process by which they verify and make sure that each and every fact and figure which is given there are properly verified and only comes from the proper source or I mean uh, the horse's mouth what we say the person who has actually found them okay and he also told me about uh, uh, about an activity they do carrying uh, carry on uh, at least it was there during those days that every year they organize a diploma or certificate program or training, practical hands-on training for uh, interested persons in science communication. And they, uh, I don't exactly remember now, they take, uh, they used to take around five or ten people. And he said that over the years, at that time it was running for almost ten or twelve years. Uh, he told us that uh, it was becoming popular and every year the number of applicants were growing. And But they were... Uh, more interested in giving the fellowship to mainly science-based people. Okay, okay, I mean, with people with uh, uh, some science uh, science uh, studies background. But he said that it was also open if writing quality was good and uh, uh, it was seen that uh, the person had uh, talent and potential, it could be offered to other persons also. And 
many of uh, he gave us a list many of whom have gone off after the um, training program and joined in prominent newspapers and channels as science reporters and journalists okay uh, then again i think i have given you a notebook notebook means uh, notebook not in the sense but it is a column published in hindu time to time by journalists of that newspaper who have faced some critical issues or uh, i mean about how they would uh, or maybe they would like to tell you how they have uh, cared or how they have to gone through a grind for getting some uh, information this person particularly said that he was a science writer a uh, science journalist for hindu in calcutta for a long time uh he would visit various laboratories indian geological uh, geological society of india geological society of india etc and uh, different uh, laboratories etc and request people for giving news about developments in science and only after something has been patented or something has been some developments has been published in a scientific journal with appreciation then only they would publish he would uh, care to publish it fine so uh, mind it you know publishing unless it is uh, verified by publication in a journal even in a uh, reputed journal uh, reputed journals will not publish something unless it is properly scientifically proved and patent is a different thing because it's in every development in science or um, a product may not be uh, qualified for patents okay so patents may not always be a, a standard for picking up things which people should know in the field of science so what i want to say is always like uh, other fields of journalism other sections of journalism always go for proper verification and only from the persons who have actually found it out or when something has been approved or something has been uh, verified by a higher body that yes it is true or there is potential in it otherwise it will be uh, it will be like informing people about half of it only and there will be a uh, erroneous or mistaken misleading of the people now uh about eminent science journalists we have uh, given some uh, names here onil agarwal who was the founder of uh, center for science and environment and uh, the, it is the organization which keeps publishing the down to earth magazine about environment and now as onil agarwal is not there uh, miss sunita narayan is the scientist in search she is also a an, an eminent uh, science journalist then k s jayaraman uh, he was uh uh with press trust of india and uh, you won't believe it i have probably spoken to you about him uh he did study uh, for phd in usa and uh, on a fellowship and uh, when he got a chance to join pti and the press uh, he came back to india and if uh, if he would have completed his studies phd studies he would have very uh, conveniently got a job in a prestigious university or institution okay but he did not take it and he dedicated his life for science journalism he was with P press trust of india then you have uh, frederick nolanha natalie Al angiers david bradley wilson the silver uh what i want to say is that, that i mean the uh, question is that science journalism and science communication is also becoming an important uh, profession nowadays you do have a lot of scope to indulge in it and earn a uh, decent uh, i mean earn a decent livelihood out of it okay and uh, you will be also fulfilling the media person's responsibility to the society by giving people the uh, important information about their life and as coronavirus and other uh, environmental issues by greta thunberg etc everything is going on at present if 
uh, in our country we could have been able to uh, we would have been successful in giving people proper scientific information since the beginning of our um, earlier days beginning of the expansion of education probably the things or problems of the society would not have come to this level like the spitting issue earlier about uh, films in uh, communication i have told you about padman etc fine <coughs> uh like other fields of journalism in science journalism also you will need uh, to move around uh, for your sources okay uh you have to identify the areas where you can find a potential uh, source as well as potential information uh in our region near tespur as well as guwahati you have so many uh, diff different establishments like uh, laboratories Uh, and other establishments like uh, defense research development organization in guwahati you have regional science center uh, rice research center near guwahati hazu i believe uh, then assam agricultural university has different uh, uh, research laboratories of different uh, subjects say one uh, is in citrus fruits near dumduma i believe uh, one is on rice in titagor etc so many others and regional rainforest research institute in jorhat near northeast institute of science and technology uh you have to then again universities agricultural universities general universities veterinary colleges are there they are also doing a lot of research in different fields now what you have to do is if you want to make a career in science journalism later on then you have to make a Round of these organizations identify the key people there who can give you some information and some important information which can be of use for the common people. Okay, so that you can write them and the people can take advantage out of it and improvise their lifestyle. Like we have to develop our sources in general fields of journalism. Here also we have to develop our sources. your sources will be the teachers uh, researchers laboratory professionals etc in these laboratories and in educational institutions again there will be some people like jadav paing sl bohuna whom i have told you about uh, earlier then there is a person uh, whom about whom i have read that uh, near jorhat uh, he is successfully preserving uh, Several hundred species of rice of the northeastern region, and especially of Assam. Okay, uh, that will be an interesting story because uh, recently there was a quiz competition in uh, in Sydney. Uh, one interesting quiz was that I think it is in Scandinavia or Norway, where there is a sort uh, place called Sardlosk or so, where they have. Uh, established a very huge uh, silo and uh, a storehouse kind of thing where they are preserving lot of rice and wheat varieties. Uh, I mean, uh, greens varieties from all over the world. Sardlovsky or Sardlovsk, probably fine. So similarly, if that can make a big news, why don't this one, where the person has been uh, trying to preserve. and conserve the rice varieties of this region okay then again uh, many years back i have heard in nearby hazu uh, area of guwahati uh, there was a very nice example of how joint forestry management activities were uh, taken up by the forest department of assam and the local people you know what is joint forest management it is is a scheme by which the people who are living on the fringes on nearby areas of the village uh, forest are allowed some amount of forest products to be uh, taken and consumed by them in return for protecting the forest on behalf of the uh, forest people okay uh, see it is not possible for forest people only to preserve or i mean to protect the forest every time every inch cannot be secure Uh, the help of the local people who are in the vicinity or the periphery of the forest is very important but on the other hand as per the forest laws uh, of the country you cannot 
take out any forest product out of any reserve forest of the country. But in this figure, just for the uh, sake of protection of the forest, some amount of understanding is there uh, given and they are allowed to take uh, some of the forest products out for their personal consumption, family consumption, not for commercial consumption. And in return, they are supposed to keep an eye or keep a strict safeguarding of the forest. Okay. So that can be done how, um, uh, why, how it is becoming so popular. Then uh, many of you must be knowing that near Gualpara there is a place called Dorongiri which is the, uh, one of the biggest banana markets in the country or even many people say even in the uh, Asian continent. Okay, even if it, it is not in the Asian continent, even if it, it is in Assam, uh, the biggest uh, banana market in Assam, you can write something on it, why uh, it is so, what are the conditions uh, which have made it possible, why so much of banana comes there and if locally, uh, whether I mean there is a big banana production around the place locally, which is facilitating it, etc. Okay. So, I mean, there are numerous such issues on which you can write about. Of course, you cannot write it in overnight. But you have to have patience, you have to develop your sources, you have to keep your eyes and ears open. And uh, your acumen, journalistic acumen has to come to your help anytime. One thing just now came to me, uh, came to my mind. Uh, when we go to Ceylon, uh, I've been there probably last year, uh, October. Uh, I've been there earlier also. One thing strikes me that uh, on the both sides of the road, I mean on the hills particularly, lot of banana trees are there. Fine. But uh, I hardly, I mean of course, I uh, go to Ceylon just probably on official work, just once or twice, not even twice, probably once, even in one year or two years. Usually I don't see bananas in those trees. Then one day I asked uh, one local person there that uh, what happens to these banana trees because if the fruits, I mean the bananas would have grown there, it could have been marketed. Uh, he also could not give me a very convincing reply. He also said he never noticed whether it grows or not. But now if you can ask somebody from botanical uh, or botanical survey of India or any uh, biology uh, research laboratories, whether uh, what kind of species of banana trees those are and uh, how much production they do give or I mean uh, yearly do they give one uh, fruit, one pack of fruit or not. That means whether uh, once a year a banana grows or not and if the banana grows what can be done and it is in such a big number the banana trees are in such a big number innumerable, innumerable uh, trees are there so if uh, the fruits from bananas from all these trees could be extracted and marketed they would have been very huge okay you can't even imagine how much uh, products you will be getting okay so similarly uh, how various scientific development activities are taking place and what fruits they are bearing uh, say in Guwahati Regional Science Center is there how many people are visiting it how many people are visiting it just for fun and if somebody is learning something from fun uh, even out of fun uh, activities if the kids are learning something that itself will be a good feature or article okay so that way, if you go to a veterinary uh, college, hospital, uh, there is uh, uh, the extension education department there. If you can ask them that what are the latest livestock species that you have developed and uh, if you have made any experiments, how the experiments are coming up. Say for example, uh, new livestock species have been developed and it has been uh, given to people for experimental farming so out of the farming how much of the people uh, how much of the products are standing up to the medical scrutiny that means say 100 uh, such 
animals or livestock uh, products were prepared and if it was it they were tested again how much of them actually uh, turned out to be good enough or if the experiment did not yield the results, it did not bring the give the results which were expected. That itself will be a new uh, important finding okay, and will make a new good important news item or feature. So that way our friends keep looking for things and reporting.